Oh, hello, my name is David. On this episode, I'll be doing a review of this, the TSL Outdoor Symbios Snowshoes. So I've been using these now for a couple of years. These are fantastic snowshoes. They have a bit of a drawback to them and we'll get to everything. So if you're not familiar with snowshoeing or you're just getting into it, there's a couple different categories. You've got your kind of typical everyday person snowshoe for flat ground. You've got snowshoes for climbing up mountains and then you've got ones for more for deep powder or like really steep mountains. That's kind of a, the general breakdown. Now, for snowshoes that are on flat ground, the most typical ones are like these ones, where they've got this big tube on the outside. Um, this one is a little different because it actually has some crampons or the teeth inside, but they don't usually have a lot of crampons or teeth when they have just the, these like tube style ones. They're meant for just going flat. Uh, once you go uphill, you're gonna need some teeth. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, I climb mountains, a lot of them, so I need teeth on my snowshoes for going uphill. These ones are interesting because I'll be comparing these a lot to the MSR snowshoes. I've used those as well, they're pretty good. I will say, just my honest opinion, I'm not paid by uh, TSL. These guys don't know who I am. They've never been in contact with me. I bought this with my own money two years ago, um, and I've used both uh, MSR and these. I like these a lot better, except for one minor reason. So, these have eight crampons on them. So these teeth here are all the crampons, and technically there's actually two teeth on each crampon, so 16, but they count it as eight. Um, there's also two teeth at the front where your boot goes. So there's eight crampons, two teeth, and you can see it has a rotating uh, foot. Now the old style snowshoes, this this did not happen, and this is very uncomfortable if it, this does not rotate. Um, even, you know, getting to other style snowshoes, the, kind of more cheap ones like this. This has a rotating foot box in it here. So this is becoming a very common thing in all snowshoes. Now, not all snowshoes have a heel lifter. Now most snowshoes, like almost all of them, the heel razor is on the bottom. Now you're wondering what's a heel razor for? It's for when you're going uphill. If you have the distance shorter to your snowshoe, then your heel has to drop less to get down to it. So your heel only goes down part way and then you can push off and go up. It makes it a lot easier. On these snowshoes, you can see the, uh, heel lifter is on the actual heel and that just snaps into place. And then you can see when you step down, there's about whatever, I don't know, two inches of distance. You don't have to push your heel all the way down to the snowshoe to push off to go up. So what's interesting about this is this is on the actual heel and not on the snowshoe. Most of them, the companies have it on flat here and you have to reach back and pull it up and it's a pain in the butt. These ones, they have it on the heel and all you have to do is take your pole, push down and push it into place and it clicks in. Now I find it's easier to definitely get this engaged, to get it disengaged. If you have a friend help you, you can, they can stick their pole in there and then you can just pull back and it'll just pop this off like that. As you can see, it takes a bit of force. Now, if you have your heel on there, and, you know, 200 pounds or whatever, 150 pounds of weight, it's, it's you know, not quite as um, hard as me trying to pull with my hand there, but still it, it's definitely easier to engage these than disengage these with a pole. Now, if obviously if you're, just crouch down like you would with a normal snowshoe to disengage or engage the heel lifter. It's just as easy to pull it. But it is nice that you start going uphill, you get tired, boom, pop it in, pop it in, and you can continue going. When you get to the top, you can crouch down. That's what I usually do. I don't try to disengage these with my pole. It's just easier to pull them back. Now, these snowshoes, they come in a few different categories and they've actually been making more of this TSL Outdoors company. They have this, which is the Hyperflex, which you can see, this is the main difference of all other snowshoes to this, is it's shaped like a shoe and it's actually flexible. So what happens is these are designed by a French company for the French Alps. So you can, they design them as mountain running snowshoes. You can, you know, see, actually go running in these. It's fantastic. And this made possible because it has a, it's molded out of this thermal plastic that bends. And what they've done if you compare these to MSR snowshoes, so those ones have a metal rim that goes all the way around with little tiny teeth on them. And what ends up happening is say if you're climbing up ice and you step and have your crampons stab into the ice and then you start to slide, the little teeth on the outside of the MSRs will dig in and prevent it from sliding. Now if you compare that to a snowshoe like this that has a metal tube, it, there's nothing to stop it from pivoting. Now these guys actually, I'd say these ones are halfway between a normal tube and a tube snowshoe and one like this because they have these big teeth on here. So the MSR have gained a lot of popularity because of that they've got the nice, like kind of rimmed teeth all the way around. And they typically have, depending on the, like if it's the Evo or Lightning Ascent or whatever, there's a whole bunch of MSR snowshoes. They'll either have one bar across the top with two crampon teeth, or they'll have two bars with two crampon teeth. Uh, so, there's, so they either have two or four. Um, these ones you can see have eight. 
and then they also have the two front teeth on the front. So eight crampon, two teeth. So this has way more uh, ability to stab into ice and grab. Now, if you compare the outside, this is a thermal molded plastic. So there's no metal tiny teeth here. So you might think the MSR have the advantage of if you're starting to like slide sideways, the teeth would grab more on the MSR and they probably do because they're metal. The only difference is when you're standing on these and these are flexed, because these actually flex into the ground as you're moving because they're flexible, you have more surface area attached to the ground and this thermal molded plastic is very rigid. You're not gonna cut yourself on this, but it, it doesn't feel good to grind my fingers against this. And so if you have this entire surface area against the ice, all of this is grabbing onto the ice versus say if you had a dip in the ground and you had the MSR ones, which are just a big block, like a big rectangle, you don't, you'd have it floating with a, with a negative space underneath. You'd only have the top front teeth and the back front metal teeth grabbing onto the ice and all the middle would be floating. So I don't really think, I would love to see a scientific study done on this. I don't think they'd be any different um, having this being plastic, but the whole thing being connected to the surface versus just floating with a couple metal teeth. They're probably the same in regards to the, the rotational shear, but this has just way better crampon support for going up ice. So I, I never feel uncomfortable going up a steep slope, uh, icy slope with these things, they dig in like crazy. The main reason why I love these, not the extra crampons and all that, but uh, or the snowboard bindings that it has, is the fact that it's it's flexible, it's comfortable. So these are designed like a shoe, and this is how we move. And this interlocking pattern, you don't really notice that until you put on some <laughs> typical snowshoes. And you know, if you've been snowshoeing, you've experienced it. You clonk your feet together because you're not used to having that space inside your foot be filled in. And so this is just such a comfortable way to move. So that's my main reason why I love these. They're just really comfortable. Plus the flexibility, it just feels like you're walking on a nice, like pillowy shoe. It's not like a, a clunky block that's on your foot like an MSR snowshoe. Now I'll break down a, a few of the features here. So that, like I said, it has a snowboard binding. So it's just like a normal snowboard binding here. You slide that in, pull it in. So first off, we got this thing here, which is the crank. So if you keep doing this, it'll crank it tighter, tighter. The white one is released, you pull it, and then you can just pull and it comes out. It's pretty simple, it's just like a snowboard binding. Now, what differs for the different types, if you look these up, they have, um, these are called the Hyperflex. And in the Hyperflex, there's Hyperflex, there's Hyperflex Access, and then there's Hyperflex uh, Elite. And it all comes down to the front binding. So these are the very original ones. You can't buy these anymore, the ones in black. The only ones that are like the same more that they sell are blue ones. This is the Hyperflex Access, which basically just has like a cheaper, simpler front um, connection of the boot here. And it took me a while to figure this out. It's, it's really it's really silly, but the very first time I used it, I was like, how do I tighten these, these boots up? And all you do is put your boot in here and you just pull this thing and it just cinches the whole thing in on there. And you're left with this tab that you just fold inside there, that's all these are. These are really simple. Now, if you get the Hyperflex uh, Elite, they come with a snowboard binding, like a buckle, just like the back. And the just Hyperflex have like a BOA system. So you crank a BOA and turn it, which are like some snowboard boots, they have those. And it just tightens a little cable system. So that's basically the difference of all of these. And this company's come out with some other ones now, which are like the Highlander, which I think is similar to the MSR uh, uh, Lightning Ascent. They're really short snowshoes for climbing like steep mountain stuff and I think they have more aggressive front crampons, that kind of thing. The main downside of this thing is while they have a normal amount of float compared to a normal MSR, I felt no difference whether I was snowshoeing with someone who had MSR or myself using an MSR snowshoe. But if you're in like really, really deep powder, say if you're uh, six feet deep kind of powder and you you snowshoeing on flat terrain and that's your main, you know, maybe you live in the middle United States where there's no uh, up or down hills that much and you really want a lot more float, you'd be better off going with like a MSR Evo with the extended six inch tail. You can buy a tail that would, there's like two pins on the back of those, those MSRs and then a tail attaches and it kind of locks in and then you pull it and it snaps into place and it adds an extra six inches of float. So I'll link those up down below. If you're looking for a more all round snowshoe that can climb mountains, these are the king. I love these. The only thing problem with these uh, <laughs> is the price. They're expensive. I got these, these really cheap because this is the very last one of the first 
run, like the black, so they don't sell these ones anymore. So I got these for a couple hundred bucks. Often these do go on sale, so that's the best time to buy them because they kind of get up there in the multiple hundreds of dollars to buy them, but they're fantastic snowshoes. For all you gram counters, these weigh, uh, on my scale, it says 1100 grams each. So that's about 2.4 pounds. On the website, they say 2.3 pounds. Um, these ones weigh 2.2 pounds each. Uh, so same thing. So these are uh, slightly heavier, but they have way more crampons than any other snowshoe I've ever used. So that makes sense. Um, really, they're in the same realm as all the other snowshoes in weight. So let's take these outside for a real world test. We're not just standing in my gear room here. So I'm outside now and what I didn't show you before, this comes with a bag. I don't usually care too much about bags for products except snowshoes is one of the things, uh, also crampons and micro spikes because this is how you transport your snowshoes in your car and you don't want to cut up your seat. So it's a good bag. It's nice, strong kind of canvasy material. It doesn't cut through them. The key to putting snowshoes away in a bag is to have them reversed like this. So the top and the bottom go like that. So it fits in there and then the spikes are facing inward so it's not cutting outward into the bag. All we're going to do is just step in there, get the snowboard binding around, toe in, heel in. I'm going to do up the ankle first. So we're just going to crank these down. It's good to stand up when you do this, have the weight in the right spot. And then all I'm going to do is grab these two hoops and just pull them. Pull, pull left, pull right and pull left, pull right, and then we can just fold these and tuck them in. So I've got a lot of powder behind me here. I've got all different kind of scenarios. I've got a steep kind of incline there with ice. Even snowshoeing without poles and holding my camera, I'm not worried about slipping. These, uh, the crampons on here, there's no way they'll slip. I've never had a moment where I've actually felt insecure on these uh, snowshoes. Now let's go up here. So typical snowshoes, they're big squares, so you have to walk like this. You can't walk like a normal shoe, how it interlocks like that. So let's go here, just normal walking. It feels normal on the outside. Camera. So often on camera it doesn't show how steep things are. This is like a pretty decently steep slope down here. I know there's still all bushes and logs underneath here, so it's really not something you want to be walking over, but actually I'm not afraid at all to go snowshoeing over this. I know I'll float over the logs and the bushes. It'll compress and it'll be fine. So let me show you. You can see a deer was going through and was actually post holing and I was floating on top. It is crusty right now, but still I didn't sink at all. And finally I'll show you going up here. It's actually quite steep. You know, it probably doesn't look like it. Uh, I don't run down this. It's so steep in the summertime. So and I'll run up this with the snowshoes and this is mostly um, not so much a case of uh, deep powder, but ice. This would be a case if you're going up a steep, like Mount Beecher, if you're local here in Vancouver Island, there's a really steep section there. It's icy, it'd be the same sort of thing. So we've got the heel razors on. It's actually quite icy up there, but I'm not, a, I, I have no fear that these things are going to slip. So I forgot to mention earlier, if you're wondering about the length of the boot size, if that can be adjusted, it can. There's two little things here. You push them in and you can just pull them up and down the extend the length of the boot so it fits your shoe size. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and this review of the TSL Outdoor Symbio snowshoes. If you uh, want to pick them up, I have a link in the description down below. It's a link to the MSR snowshoes. If you're looking for ones with a heavier float on them, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to check out some adventure hiking content, I have some from all over Canada, US. Until next one, have a great day. Phew.